What's up, Bloom Poppers? It's Shadow here, back with another video, this time playing Elite Lich on Winter Park. Now, originally, I wasn't planning to play this because I usually don't do boss events, but I kept seeing videos in my YouTube notifications about the new crazy 200 million health Elite Lich, so I figured, what the heck, might as well check it out and see what this is all about. And honestly, this event week felt like the perfect week to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about for months now, and that's the question of whether or not Elite bosses are getting too difficult. Now before I go too much into this, I just wanted to clarify that I am very much a casual player. I'm not super competitive with any of the events, I mostly just play this game for fun and for content, and I'm really not very competitive on any of the leaderboards or anything, so this is very much a casual player's perspective on this. And to be clear, I am aware that elite bosses aren't supposed to be easy, I mean this isn't logs on deflation after all, it is an elite boss. But at the same time, I feel like Ninja Kiwi goes straight up overkill sometimes, and this week is a prime example of that, with Lich having 600% health. That's right, 6 times stronger than normal. Now, I haven't played most of the event weeks, but this is by far the most health-scaled boss I've encountered. The worst one before this I've encountered was the 300% health Blunarius, which I also made a video about. And then a while back, there was a Dread Bloom with both double health and double speed, which granted isn't that bad compared to some bosses since it is really slow and frankly not that strong, but still quite nasty to deal with. And honestly, it feels like the problem is getting worse over time, not better, because I keep seeing crazier and crazier boss weeks. We're eventually just going to end up with a 500% speed, 1000% HP boss, and some sweat's going to figure out a way to beat it while the rest of us are just like, what the hell do we do with this? Now, I've been talking about the 600% HP, but I don't think you guys realize how bad that is. You want to see what 600% health looks like? This is what 600% health looks like. Normally, tier 1 elite on Lich isn't that bad. Just grab an elite defender, put it in the corner where its 4 times attack won't be sapped by Lich, and then just watch as it completely destroys it. But with 6 times health, look, it's doing basically no damage. Now, to be clear, this gameplay is pre-recorded because I wanted to run through this before I formed an opinion about it. But let's just be clear, this thing was a pain to deal with for tier 1. So this tier was so nasty, I had to get a first strike and two spike storms just to deal with it. Also to pop the Lich Soul immediately after it spawned, because otherwise it would take lives and the Elite Defender would trigger, which would get sapped by Lich and end up healing it. But as you can see here, it died on round 54, which meant I really didn't have much time to prepare and farm for the next tier, which would be a lot stronger than this one. Speaking of farming, I was mostly going to skip past these parts, but I feel like I need to talk a bit about what Ninja Kiwi's been doing with farms lately. They've just been nerfing all of them. They made Wall Street more expensive, they made Banana Central more expensive, and they made Monkeyopolis weaker. And when I say they nerfed the Monkeyopolis, I mean it got hit hard. I'm pretty sure it got reduced by like 200 or 250 per round. And the thing is, that used to be the meta for early farming before Tier 1, and now it sucks. I still use it though, because I don't know what's better though. But to me, it just seems like a problem that Ninja Kiwi keeps making boss events more difficult and making farms weaker. I mean, don't get me wrong, not all boss weeks are this difficult, but some of them do just pop out and be completely insane sometimes. Also, quick question for you guys, when was the last time a farm got objectively buffed? Let me know in the comments, but I can't remember the last time that happened. Back to the gameplay, here we are with tier 2 and over a million health at round 60. This is fine, no problem here, right? Well, in the end with this tier, there was kind of a problem, but not really. I just had to spend way more than I wanted to when it came to defense on this thing. I had to get a carpet of spikes, a master bomber, and of course the MAD. All of that for a tier 2 that took over 12 rounds to kill. So yeah, a major problem with these super buffed bosses is that they take so long to kill, you have to invest enough into defense that there isn't much left over to keep investing into farms, which really hurts in later tiers. I would like to point out that this boss event wasn't 100% bad news. Ability cooldowns got reduced significantly, so now a monkeynomic strat was actually helpful. And yes, I put down a tech bot. I know ranked players are going to get me cancelled now in the comments, but I didn't want to click the button that many times, alright? Now before I go into the true insanity of this boss, mostly tier 4 and tier 5, I need to talk about a moment in it that I did actually enjoy, and that was tier 3. With a makeshift dart paragon, I was able to easily destroy it, even though it had over 6 million health. Shout out to the dart paragon for being awesome, and for master double cross for allowing degree 20, all that, whatever. So if I just kept ranting about how difficult this boss was, that would get boring in a hurry, and that would probably make most people click off this video. But I just have a question for you guys. I want you to think about this. Should a degree 60 paragon be able to take out a tier 4 elite boss? I'm not talking about like Dread Bloon or whatever with the immunities. I'm talking about just pure firepower wise. Should a degree 60 paragon be able to take out a tier 4 elite? Not even a T5, a tier 4. I'll give you something else to think about. What if that Paragon is the second cheapest Paragon? Still a degree 60, but the second cheapest. But yeah, at the same time, still well over a million dollars to build it. Think about it. 
Okay, so you've thought about it, but tell me, when it has more health than the tier 5 elite normally does, does that change your answer? Spoiler alert, it didn't work. I even added a wizard paragon to try and save me, but it just wasn't enough. Now I know I am nowhere near close to being a pro at this game, but keep in mind this is basically a casual player's perspective on the difficulty of elite bosses, and to me, this one is way more difficult than normal. Luckily, on my second attempt, I was able to pull it off with a makeshift ninja and a makeshift boomerang, two paragons better than one, but to be fair, that should not be necessary for a tier 4 boss. And let's be real, this isn't even the hardest boss week Ninja Kiwi has had. The 400% Vortex was way harder than this from what I've heard. I mean, I wasn't good enough to beat it myself, but even I sab struggled with it. At this point, I was still undecided on whether or not this elite boss was too difficult for casual players, but luckily, Tier 5 answered that question for me the moment it showed up. 144 million. 144 million health in this boss. Well over 150 million if you count the Lich Soul. This is insane. Not to mention that since previous tiers were so difficult, I wasn't able to farm nearly as much as I wanted, meaning that my paragons were very much makeshift. I barely got degree 60 with the ace gone, and I usually prefer to have a degree 80 for these kinds of things. But luckily, as you can see here, the reduced cooldowns did have one advantage, and that was that I was able to straight up spam carpet bombs. It took a lot of micro just having to re-aim it and stuff, but I was able to fire them off a lot more often than I would have been able to normally, especially with the degree 60 having a reduced cooldown. But as you can see here, it started getting really sketched later on. It was almost halfway through the map, and it was just barely half health. If I was going to beat this thing, it would be very close, especially once it got further along and the boomerang couldn't hit it as much. Also, confession time, I did something really dumb a little later in the boss fight. I ended up buying a dartling gun and upgrading top path instead of middle, so without thinking, I sold the thing and added 4 million more health to Lich. So yeah, I had to go back into that because otherwise I would have died. But eventually, with almost perfect carpet bomb micro, glue storm, three paragons, and an MAD, I was finally able to take down Elite Lich and get the medal for it, because for some reason I'd never beaten Elite Lich before. This boss honestly stressed me out a lot at moments, and it was difficult as hell, but I have to admit, the victory was very satisfying. So going into this originally, my goal was to determine whether or not Elite bosses were getting too difficult for the average player. And honestly, I have to say that they really are. I mean, it was satisfying to beat this, but it was really difficult at moments, even for me as someone with elite boss experience. Less experienced players probably would have struggled a lot with this or not been able to beat it at all. And honestly, with the conditions that Ninja Kiwi keeps adding and the fact that they keep nerfing farms and nerfing some of the best boss towers, I honestly think if this trend continues, elite bosses might be limited to just the top players, and that's honestly really sad to me. Don't get me wrong, I know elite bosses should be difficult, but I feel like it's being taken a bit too far. And for what it's worth, for top players that want more of a challenge, I mean, they can take off monkey knowledge, and there's also ranked mode so they can test their skills against each other. But in the end, I don't know what future boss events will bring, and I don't know what future balance changes will bring. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to show your support by leaving a like and subscribing to my channel, and don't forget to use my creator code SHADOWVIPERBTD in the balloon shop to help support me. Viewer support really helps me out a lot, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.